So tell us about the dish, please. This is a Calabrian-inspired shrimp and grits. Very beautiful. I mean, it's a spectacular-looking dish. The ratio, it's just too much grits. Need a bit more meat, but very, very tasty. Thank you. Thank Big you, time. judges. Hello, Chrissy. Hello. Tell us about your dish, please. I've made a Thai green curry with grilled shrimp. In a fairly big dish like this, you just gave three shrimps? Yeah, I was a little stingy, I'll admit. <laughs> you got some very, very strong flavors in there. Thank you, Chrissy. <laughs> Thank you. I've cooked my heart out, I've done my best. I'm just worried that it's not enough. 6 home cooks await their fate as the judges deliberate on which of them will earn a coveted white apron and move forward in the competition. You 6 home cooks were all so fierce that there were actually 3 dishes that stood out. Wow. And the cooks who made those 3 dishes were Rajin Andre and Jennifer. Yeah. Congratulations, you three. Come and collect your aprons. I'm proud of my dish, and more than that, I'm proud of myself. Thank you so much, Chef. Great job. Winning a white apron means I'm one step closer to getting my catering company started with my dad. Thanks. Job. Thank you so much. Could the three remaining home cooks please join us at the front? People are going to get cut, and I might be one of them. Anything could send anybody home at this time. I have no clue what's going to happen. The bar has been set sky high. Unfortunately, only one of you exceeded it. The final white apron goes to... Chrissy. Yeah. You did it. The journey starts now. Thank you so much for believing in me. There you go. I've always been wear your heart on your sleeve kind of person, but I have never cried so much. Like, <laughs> I'm crying for joy. I'm crying for excitement. <laughs> it's a roller coaster. Oh. Mark and Lena, you are both wonderful home cooks. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. You came so, so close, and you should be incredibly proud of what you brought to this kitchen. Keep chasing your food dreams. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. The rest of you, get down here. Oh, let's go, baby. Oh, my God. I've got my apron. I plan on holding on to this until I'm the last one standing here. I actually have no nerves at all. I'm really, really excited. Master Chef Canada is 100% where I belong. Congratulations, everyone. This is the biggest culinary competition in Canada, and you are the country's top 12. Yes. The next steps winning Master Chef Canada season six. Coming up as the MasterChef Canada two-hour premiere continues. Yeah. The home cooks dig into their very first mystery box. Big ass bowl. Okay. <laughs> and show off with the humblest of ingredients. I got it, baby. But when faced with an array of choices, wow. some home cooks completely lose the plot. I need to see technique and sophistication. The odds are looking pretty slim. to the top 12. I didn't just make it, I made it. I left behind my skating career to be here, so I'm extremely driven to be the best I can. All right, all right. Woohoo! 
do this. Outside of my kids being born, this is one of the best things that's ever happened to me. I've never been satisfied with anything in my entire life, and I'm not satisfied with top 12. I want to be top one. <laughs> Welcome back to the MasterChef Canada Kitchen. You joined a very elite club as one of the 12 best home cooks in the country. Yeah, yeah baby! You beat thousands of home cooks to get here. Only 11 people stand in the way of you winning it all. Now, you just have to cook better than all of them. Okay, top 12, it's time for you to launch your cooking dreams. This kitchen has everything you need to succeed, including high quality Moderno cookware. And there's no better way to reach for the stars than a mystery box challenge. It could be anything in this box. I'm a control freak. I like to know what I'm doing, so this is pretty stressful. I'm just hoping that whatever is in there, I've seen before. Are you ready to find out what's under your first mystery box? Yes, yes chef! chef! On the count of three, lift those boxes. One, two, three, lift! Oh! oh. <laughs> it's a bunch of root vegetables. <laughs> That's right, root vegetables. There's parsnip, beets, ginger, sweet potato. There's some artichokes, celery root, turmeric, lotus root. Nothing is more literally down to earth than these hidden gems. You can do so many different things with root vegetables. Do I do Asian or Mediterranean? Immediately my mind just starts racing. For this first mystery box, we want you to use these root vegetables to tell us something about your roots. I have no idea what I'm going to make with this. I'm Italian. We don't eat root vegetables. Being Portuguese, root vegetables are something that I use all the time. I'm ready to go. We want to see dishes that demonstrate skill, taste, creativity, and presentation. For this next challenge, you'll have full access to the MasterChef Canada Pantry. You'll have 60 minutes to create a stunning dish. The home cook with the best dish will get a huge advantage in the upcoming Elimination Challenge. Are you ready to dig deep? Yes, yes Chef! Yes! The time starts now! Go, go, go. Ready? All right. This pantry is amazing. You're looking around and it's just a wide variety of everything you could ever dream of. Bacon, I'm looking for bacon. Does anybody know where the onion is? Potatoes, parsnip. Let's go, guys. <laughs> go, 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 go. It's heavy. I'm behind you, Jenny. This first challenge is important to me because I want to set myself apart from the other cooks. These other 11 people are damn good at what they do, but I just need to do it better. vegetable is one of the most common ingredients used in a lot of culture. It is comfort food to almost everyone in this world. Root vegetables, they're actually like really versatile and also very forgiving, which is like everything I like in a food or a person, basically. Michael, what would you do? I'm thinking totally vegetarian and almost make a meal for you of these root vegetables. I tell you, sometimes these root vegetables can be very bland. So I would take meat and make a stew. So all that meat flavor will go into that root vegetable, making it more exciting. I would actually make a multi-layered soup using all root vegetables. Three very different options. <laughs> you know what, I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm making spicy Cajun puree with garlicky mussels. I'm making a cod dish from Newfoundland, I'm making the root vegetable to stir. I'm doing a classic French pump puree. Root veggies is just a part of my culture in Quebec. We're having ourselves some hash. Making rum mashed sweet potatoes and roasted root vegetable hash with sausage. <laughs> I'm doing a dish that's uh, near and dear to me. My uh, daughter calls it pink soup. I'm doing uh, Ukrainian borscht. My family is a big Ukrainian family. Growing up, I watched my mom my grandmother cook soups and hearty meals for us, so it's kind of a collaboration between everything. Got this. Got to see the sides. I'm making a filet mignon with a celery root puree and roasted vegetables. Whoa. Hey, 
Are these radishes? It tastes like a radish. I don't taste it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a carrot. <laughs> it works better if you turn it on. Tony, you didn't look too happy when you saw what was inside the box. Those roots are not part of my roots. I'm making a chicken cacciatore, but I'm using uh, ginger and turmeric inside the cacciatore. Would your Italian family like this, you know, <laughs> ginger turmeric no, cacciatore? No, I'll be honest with you, they, they wouldn't like it. Uh, I can't wait to sink my teeth into it. Thank you very much, Chef. <laughs> Come on. There we go. I am making a root vegetable soup. This is actually how I convinced my husband to let me do the cooking. He was known as the good cook, but this was the dish that sealed the deal. It has sweet potato, turnip, celery root, and some golden beets. When blended together, they create like a super root vegetable. I'm sticking to my roots and I'm doing uh, Mediterranean. I'm half Greek and I'm half French. So root vegetables are a common staple in my house. I'm making a parsnip and artichoke puree, a pan-seared crispy skin trout, finished off with a sauce vierge. Gotta go grab another pan. Come on, guys, let's go. Coming from a mountainous region of Iraq, the root vegetables we really eat a lot of are radishes and potatoes and turnips. I'm doing a radish cheesecake. This might be the first radish uh, cheesecake anyone's ever seen. Mm. 30 minutes! 30 minutes has gone by! Big ass bowl. Okay. <laughs> I'm making root vegetables five ways with a balsamic glaze and a parsnip and yellow beet puree. I'm coming from a farm with my four kids hanging off my legs to the MasterChef Canada kitchen. <laughs> it's crazy! <laughs> Hi, Jenny. Hi. The fact that you have this garden at home, you must eat a lot of vegetables. That's pretty much all we eat at home. Do the kids ever turn up their nose and say, no more oh, vegetables? of course, of course. I hide those veggies in everything. I'm very excited to see what you're going to come I'm up with. I'm excited for you to try it. Come on, baby. Ah. I see all the beautiful colors, and I immediately think rainbow trout. I'm using a combination of different root vegetables, like radishes, beets, blue potato, and then a bit of leek to make a rainbow scale on top of the fish. The inspiration behind my dish is my dad. We would fish in the summertime for rainbow trout. And I remember my dad showing me how to get the bobber on the line. Fond memories. My dad died when I was 20. It was a mighty rip through the page of my life. And I wanted to do things that would be kind of safe. For a really long time, food felt like a risk. I now feel ready to do some risking. <laughs> five minutes! You only have five minutes left. All I see is that minute hand ticking away. All right. I think we're cooking over here. Are we, are we, are we? I'm leaving the cheesecake to the very last minute because I need to make sure that it's set. I think it worked. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, oh, man. Regine's cheesecake is falling apart. My heart sinks. The top 12 home cooks are digging deep in a mystery box challenge showcasing root vegetables. Ah. There are just five minutes left and Rogine is having trouble with his cheesecake. Ah. The first cheesecake didn't set. I'm really freaking out because I need to win. I put my offset spatula in the second cheesecake, and I'm literally holding my breath. <laughs> it looks like a perfect root vegetable cheesecake. But taste is king. One minute. You have one more minute left. We're rooting for those root vegetables. Oh, boy. Almost done. <sighs> yeah. Uh -uh. Well done, everyone. Throughout the challenge, the judges have been observing each home cook. Now, they're taking one last look before they select the three most promising dishes for tasting. 
I'm confident in what I'm doing, and I have three chances to get called. I'm hoping I'm one of them. I just want them to call my name so badly. It looks like a big pile of crapola. I don't have a chance. The first home cook that we'd like to call up put an unexpected spin on their earthy ingredients. That plate belongs to... Jennifer. Yeah! <laughs> That's the feeling. <laughs> this is Turf and Surf, a sweet potato puree, a beet puree, seasoned blanched vegetables. Underneath all of that, there is a rainbow trout poached in a flavored broth. This might be the first fish I've eaten where I like the scales. The fish is cooked perfectly. The root vegetables, they're definitely the star of the show. They really showcase those earthy, deep flavors. Overall, pretty amazing. Thanks. Hi there, Jennifer. Hello, Chef. It certainly is eye-catching. Beet is such a wonderful root vegetable to work with. What comes out is that earthy, slightly sweet flavor. And those root vegetables as part of the scales on top, maybe slightly under seasoned. Okay. But if I had to score this dish on a scale of one to 10, I'd be giving it eight and a half. So well done, I love it. Thank you. Thank you. The next home cook we'd like to call up honored their own roots by digging deep. Chrissy, please bring your dish to the front. Oh my God, I can't believe it's happening. I do have what it takes. It's a roasted root vegetable soup. And there's some sunchoke chips, a little bit of crispy pancetta for nuttiness and pine nuts. It's very, very pretty. I just love what you did with these sunchoke chips and these herbs because it, it looks really earthy. Let's give it a try. Wow. Oh. It is so good. <laughs> it's comforting. It's got good balance of flavors. I got the sweetness from the potatoes. Fantastic job. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So, Chrissy, are you proud of the soup? I am very proud of the soup. Yes. You've got the coriander seed. You've got a little bit of chili happening. Yeah. You've definitely showcased to me that you have a really great palate. Thank you. When you pureed the soup, did you add any dairy to it? Yes, I poured heavy cream in there. I would have added actually olive oil to it because that cream right now is masking oh. a lot of the big, bold flavors that you really want to achieve, right? Yeah. Other than that, it's amazing. Great job. Thank you so much. I left my career as an airline customer service agent to come here and do MasterChef Canada, and it's completely worth it. The third and final dish turned the humble root vegetable into an undisputed star. And that dish was made by... Jenny. Yeah! Good job, Jenny. Oh my God, thank you. <laughs> This is Vegetables Five Ways with a balsamic glaze and a parsnip, apple, and yellow beet puree. The plating is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. It really is a discovery of goodies. Great silky smooth puree. The sweet potato? Glazed maple sweet potato. I guess that gets the kids to eat them, right? Yeah. I put some hot spice on it, though. They don't like that at home. But the judge does. <laughs> That's great. How did you go about treating the lotus root? I just boiled down some beets, and then I pickled it just in the beet juice. It could have sat in that brine just a little bit longer, just to give a bit more of an acidic edge. I agree, yeah. But it's still crispy and flavorful. Well done. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Jenny, I like the way you separated the vegetables. I see the winters here. Celeriac, Swiss chard, sweet potatoes. 
and this side with summery vegetables, radish, beets. You know your vegetables. Sweet potatoes. Hmm. I like the balance, the sweetness. We taste the pickles. Good crunch. Got the acidity. Seeing a lot of techniques. Wonderful job. Thank you. Wow. I'm feeling really proud of myself. Like I belong here, maybe. I love you girls so much. Who would have thought that we would be faced with such outstanding dishes in the first Mystery Box Challenge? Standing here with these two other amazing women, like we killed it, we killed it. Taste, technique, all three had stories to tell, and they did that with humble root vegetables. I came in here thinking that I was way less educated in culinary than the people that are standing behind me. Three, let's go. Let's do it. I want this advantage. Anything that gives me a leg up in the competition, that's what I need. The Mystery Box is a test of creativity, and you three passed with flying colors. The winner only edged ahead by the slightest of margins. And that home cook is... Jenny, congratulations. Ah! Good job, Jack! You have earned a major advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. You are safe from elimination. Please head up to the gallery. This feels really good. As a mom, you give all of yourself to your kids and you forget who you are. And since I've been here, I just want to keep cooking until I win. Oh, wow. The judges come rolling out with this giant metal box. I don't have a clue what's underneath it. I hope that it's something I want. Fish. <laughs> Home cooks, please join Jennifer and Chrissy up at the front. We just saw what you could do with root vegetables. But for this elimination challenge, you'll have to show off a whole new set of skills. Are you ready to see what you're working with? Yes, yes chef! chef! One, two, three, lift! This is amazing. I see so many different types of protein. I'm extremely excited. You have leg of lamb, octopus, duck legs, ground beef, turkey, king crab, whole salmon, clams, and pork shoulder. A very good protein. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I can nail this challenge. Each of you will be cooking with a different one of these proteins. But there are only nine proteins and 11 of you. Oh. That's right, Jenny. You get to save two home cooks from elimination. Your decision will have a huge impact on the course of the competition. Because at the end of this challenge, there will be two home cooks eliminated. Wow. There's twice as much pressure and twice as much stress. With that in mind, Jenny, who are you going to save? Pick me, Jenny. Pick me. I don't know how much he wants to save the prairie guy, but the odds are looking pretty slim. I'm going to save Chrissy. And Jennifer, get your butt up here. This is a strategic choice for me. I picked Chrissy because I feel like I can probably beat her later on in the competition. And Jennifer, because every time she cooks, she's going to get stronger, and I don't want her to have that advantage over me. <laughs> Jenny, you have one final advantage. Oh, my gosh. You get to choose the order in which everybody else picks their protein. Who are you going to choose first? Strategy-wise, I want to pick home cooks first that I can probably beat later on in the competition. I'm going to choose Tony first. I'm going to take the crab. Wow. 
I chose the crab because I want to do something creative and challenging and awesome. Who's next? Colin. East Coaster. Josh. Taking clamps. Cliff. I'm choosing the duck legs. Andre. I need that pork. Oh, this guy's heavy. I'm so glad to work with the pork because I've worked with it so many times. Steven. Ground beef. Chanel. I've cooked every single protein on that table except the octopus. I'd rather go home taking a risk <laughs> if I have to go home at all. Two remaining home cooks. Alyssa. Alyssa, please give me lamb. Don't give me turkey, please. I'm going to take the turkey. Thank God. Jenny, why did you choose Rosine last? Because he is one of the biggest competitors here. That's uh, a huge compliment coming from her, so I'll take it. Please take your lamb and head back to your station. Lamb is something I grew up eating, so I lucked out <laughs> going dead last. <laughs> this kitchen has everything you need to succeed, including premium German-made Mila appliances. You only have 60 minutes! Home cooks, are you ready to make us a dynamite dish? Yes, yes chef. chef! Your time starts now! Come on, guys! Come on, guys! Go on, go on, go on, go on. No, they're not there. <laughs> oh, here we go, herbs. I'm not really too familiar with duck legs, but I'm not going to play it so safe anymore. The duck is super moist, and I want to suck up all those flavors. Just grabbing everything. Is that any shit? Oh, it was really caught time there. Love it. Go, 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 go. go. Underlay, underlay, underlay. Hey, hey, hey. Good, Good job. Okay. I just want to stay here, cook for the judges, and prove myself that even though I'm young, I can stand with the big boys. Yes, yeah, Steven. Now, this is the first elimination challenge of season six, and you can see the fear on the home cook's eyes right now. I'm cooking for my life now. I gotta stick to what I know and stick to what my dad taught me. Looking good. All right, let's do this. Each of these proteins require different skills, different methods of cooking. This is a big bird. Alyssa is dealing with turkey almost her size. But she is a hunter, and hunters love to butcher their own meat. Oh, like a pro. Never broken down an octopus before. It's slimy, yeah. Given the choice, I would pick something that I am familiar with. Let's remember, two are going home. I would do the opposite. I would be pushing myself because of the fact that there are two going home. I don't have a lot of experience with crab, but I want to try something new. I am making crab and ricotta stuffed cannelloni. I want to show them that I can make a pasta, but it's also a, an opportunity to redeem myself. I'm gonna put everything I have into this damn dish. I got it, baby! This is an elimination challenge, and two people are going home, so I need to step up my game. I am making turkey breast. I'm gonna stuff it with some butter and aromatics. I don't like turkey, and I was stuck with it, but that's what I gotta work with. Andre. Walk me through the dish you're making today. I am making something that everyone comes to my house for every single year. Jerk pork and coleslaw. But what motivates you to actually cook from the heart when you're at home? My wife. She's a hardworking nurse, and I got to make sure she's fed right. What do you do at the hospital? I'm a housekeeper in the OR, so oh, wow. as soon as the surgeries are over, I got to be the guy to clean up the stuff. Wow. Did you make your own jerk spice? Yes, sir. I'm bringing it straight back to Jamaica. I got the lamb that I wanted, and if I successfully elevate it, the judges will be really impressed. Roisin, what are you doing with this leg of lamb? I'm gonna make a pressure cooker lamb ragu. I'm gonna use biryani spices. Biryani is one of our favorite things in the Middle East. You're making a biryani. Where's the rice? Uh, there is no rice. The starch is gonna be gnocchi. Have you ever done this before? Uh, no, I just made it up. You like to make up a lot of things, don't you? Exactly. I want to have the judges say that my dish is different. My whole life always felt different. I moved here from Iraq when I was eight years old to a very small town. 
being different has really pushed me to do inventive things and stand out. Yeah. Stephen chose the ground beef, which I think is a difficult protein to work with. Flavoring it and being able to elevate it so it feels much more luxurious. I'm making my play on the Greek style kefta sandwich. I'm familiar with ground beef because with skating, most of the money goes to training, so we can't buy like the most expensive cuts. Oh, yes. But you just need to know how to work with it. I want to get a freaking good sear on my keftas. 30 minutes! Oh, 30 minutes has gone by! Keep it going, keep it going. Two people are going home. I'm not going to eat one of them. I'm making a barbecue pulled duck sandwich with a red cabbage slaw. The most I've done with duck is throw it on the smoker or roast it in the oven. All right. This time, I'm cooking the duck legs in a pressure cooker. Let's see if we can get some of this cherry wood smoke inside this duck. This is completely out of my comfort zone right now. Mm. Hi there, Cliff. Hey there, Chef. Hey. You want to taste the sauce? A little barbecue sauce, I'm guessing. Yes, sir. Mm. That is good. Very All good. All right. Cliff. What's your day job? From nine to five, I'm doing like desk side support work. So I'm helping people fix their computers. But my food dream is to have my own little barbecue shop where I can bring all the kind of barbecue I, I grew up eating right here. That sounds fantastic. Keep an eye on that duck leg. Make it tasty and elevate it, okay? Yes, sir. Good luck with it. Keep it going, guys. Keep it going. I'm making a Greek octopus with a tomato reduction. My husband and I go to restaurants a lot. It's definitely one of our hobbies. So I know I can elevate it with the plating and the look. For the past few months, I started developing an idea for a restaurant. It's not part of my business plan to go home on this challenge. I would have been great with that octopus. Chanel's a badass. Ooh, he approves. <laughs> Over on Collins Station, he's got salmon. My plate is salmon with caper relish, pistachio dust, a cauliflower smash, a bacon crumble, and a parmesan twill. This cook is so important to me right now, I just don't want to go home today. Oh man, Collins all over the place. Ten minutes! Ten minutes for the dynamite protein oh, dish! Keep it going, keep it going. I'm pushing for time here. Look at, look at, look. Oh my gosh. I burnt my fish. The home cooks are fighting for survival in their first elimination challenge, cooking proteins to impress the judges. Two people are going home. I am not going to be one of them. At the end of this challenge, two home cooks will be sent home, and Colin is struggling with his salmon dish. I burnt it. I burnt my fish. Look at, look, oh my god. I actually had two pieces of fish. I debone it, salt and pepper it, throw in the pan as fast as I possibly can. I'm in the weeds. Collins had to cook a second piece of salmon. I don't think he'll get it done in time. Hot, hot, hot. It's interesting to see what's happening here. You have cooks that are keeping it too simple, not pushing hard enough, and you have other cooks being a little bit too ambitious, and they may fall because of it. Wake up every day and say, I'm going to make something crazy. He's like Willy Wonka. <laughs> Rojin is like a mathematician. He's a magician. My brain hurts when I talk to him. I'm not going home today. Five minutes! Five more minutes left! Keep it up. You got all this. Push right to the end. Yep. Oh my gosh. This could be burnt. Oh my god. My lamb ragu is scorched, and I have no choice but to try and salvage something off the top. I'm worried about Cliff. He is just now taking the lid off his pressure cooker. Damn, it's not cooked enough. I'm trying to pull the duck, but it's not pulling. Oh, wow. Not. Cliff's duck is actually not tender enough to pull the meat away from the bone. All right, new plan. I don't have time to argue with this duck leg. Let's just cut the meat off the bone. Damn it. 30 seconds. Clock is ticking. Last push. Come on. Everyone else is plating, and my fish is still cooking. Looks like that sea creature. <gasps> It's almost there, almost there. Here we go, that's what I was looking for. 
There's so much happening right now that I don't know where to look. Five, four, three, two, one, heads up! Wow. OMG. Damn. So glad I cooked two pieces of fish. <laughs> nice work, everyone. Tony, please bring your dish to the front. I made a crab and ricotta stuffed cannelloni with crab, tomato, and caper sauce. Have you worked with crab before? Not much. And you got first pick? Yes. Well, it sounds like you took a bit of a risk. I did. Well, at first glance, I think the dish looks very eye-catching and appealing. What I'm looking for in a cannelloni dish like this is the lightness to that pasta, a good amount of filling. But I still want to be able to taste that sweet, succulent crab meat. That is very good. Well, thank you. You are masterful when it comes to flavors and building sauces. And the sauce on this cannelloni just helps elevate the sweet flavors of that crab meat. That I'd be happy to have on my restaurant menu. Thank you. What an honor. Good job, Tom. <laughs> Holy crab. That's amazing. Colin, please bring up your dish. I want the judges to see that I do have some uh, technique and some salmon crusted skin on with caper relish, smash cauliflowers underneath, and a bacon crumble. How's the cook on the salmon? Medium rare. This is a nice medium rare. Salmon is nicely cooked. But what is this? That there is a Parmesan tuile. You added a lot of components in there that might not have needed to be there. Okay. Too many ideas. You only need it one to make that salmon shine. Okay. Alyssa, you're up next. It's a wild turkey supper with wild rice. You're a huntress, right? Yes. Have you ever killed turkey? I wish. Wow. <laughs> All right, let's taste the turkey. Should be the star of the show here. The turkey is very succulent. Have you cooked wild rice before? Uh, just once or twice. You know we're sending home two home cooks today, right? Yes, chef. You tell me if you think the wild rice needs a little more time. Yes. The rice is chewy. I'm super disappointed. I think I'm packing my bags and going home. You tell me if you think the wild rice needs a little more time. Yes. The taste I took earlier tasted cooked, but I was wrong. So you're gonna have to give us a lot more than some turkey and rice. I just want to see more creativity. Cliff, please bring up your dish for tasting. I'm pleased with the way it looks. It's nice and big, the way we like it in Texas. <laughs> this is a barbecue duck sandwich with duck red sandwich. cabbage slaw. That's a pretty big sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see quality over quantity. The barbecue sauce has a nice acidic edge to it. You know, technically, that duck is cooked, but I don't think it's quite cooked to the extent that you wanted it to be. A look of that sandwich feels a little too ordinary. Not quite a bullseye. Hi, Cliff. Hello, Chef. Sauce is so good. But it's a sandwich. This is Master Chef Canada. I need to see technique and sophistication. Don't disappoint me, Cliff. I will not, Chef. Can we get the chance? I'm hoping and praying this sandwich is enough to get me through. Rogine, please bring your dish up. It's biryani gnocchi with uh, lamb ragu. You used the pressure cooker. Yes. How much moisture did you put in? I miscalculated the fat on the lamb, so it evaporated too quickly and burned the bottom. I picked out as much as I could. 
That scorching aroma travels up through the unscorched lamb and it contaminates it with a very burnt flavor. Think that happened here? My hope is that it didn't. If this is burnt, it's the end of the road for you. You managed to mask that burnt flavor that you had from the bottom of the pressure cooker. Very multi-layered. I love the use of spices. You got lucky, my friend. Stephen, please bring up your dish for tasting. I hope the judges appreciate how I push myself out of the box. I did my play on a kefta sandwich with a taboule salad. Steven, you are a professional figure skater, right? Yes. Sometimes the judge is very harsh. Uh, they're truthful. Truthful. Well, I can tell you, I am very, very truthful. I think the kafta is under season, okay? And it's dry. It's a good dish, but it's able to compete at the level that we want here. Competition is fierce. Andre, please bring up your dish. I made jerk pork with festival and a side of coleslaw. Cornbread? It's a type of cornbread. It's fried, it's sweet, it's called a festival. It is firm and dense, has a wonderful little crunchy outside. Pork, a sauce with this would probably just tip it over the edge. But a lovely blushing pink. I somewhat would expect no different than a great jerk spice from you, Andre. The balance and the way that it works with the flavor of the pork without that fiery heat. Authentic. This is what we need to see in this competition. Thank you, Chef. Chanel, please bring your dish up to the front. As I'm walking up to the judges, I can barely breathe. So it's a Greek octopus. Served with tomato medley reduction and crispy chickpeas and potatoes for freshness. You picked the octopus. Did you cook it before? No, never. You pick something that you've never cooked before in an elimination round. I'm honestly here to grow and to learn. I like my octopus tender on the inside and crispy on the outside. So, do you think you got it? I think so. You got it? Yay! You hit that Mediterranean flavor. I feel the cherry tomatoes, I feel the garlic, the olives. It's a perfect complement to that octopus. Now, I would suggest make the sauce less chunky, okay? To get this nice balance of texture. But other than that, it's got a lot of the Greek classics in there, but it's done in a nouvelle Chanel way. Exactly. Good <laughs> job, Chanel. Woo! Good job, dude. There were some really great dishes, well thought out dishes, very tasty dishes. But on the other end of the scale, there were a few that disappointed. It really comes down to a piece of protein that's not seasoned or cooked long enough. It was the three unders, under season, under cook, or underwhelming. The top two dishes of the night were made by home cooks who took risks on unfamiliar proteins. The second best dish of the night was made by... Chanel. Woo! Doing really good. I think I proved to the judges that I'm riskier than they probably thought I was. And the best dish was made by... Tony, yeah, congratulations. <laughs> I won, I did it. <laughs> you and Chanel will both be captains in next week's team challenge. Oh my God, oh my God. I'm going to be the team captain and can't wait to get started. Awesome. If I call your name, please come up to the front. Colin. I could definitely be going home today. Steven. Alyssa and Cliff. I'm still not knowing what's going on. My heart's pumping. I didn't come here to go home this early. Colin and Alyssa.
Melissa, please step forward. What we saw from you tonight isn't gonna cut it. But your salmon and turkey were perfectly cooked. And enough to keep you in this competition. Please head back to your stations. Stephen, at just 21, you beat home cooks with decades more experience to grab that white apron. Cliff, you served one of the best audition dishes we have ever tasted. Your barbecue style is a reflection of who you are. And when you open your place, three of us will be the first in line. Please leave your aprons at your stations. I'm proud of myself. I mean, I know I accomplished a lot. I got the first apron, and I felt that I was able to bring something different. My family's going to be super proud. Knock them out. Keep knocking them out. Being mentored in the MasterChef kitchen is a life-changing experience and is priceless. Love you guys! Skating, top 12 MasterChef, I got a badass resume. I came here as a home cook, and I'm leaving here as one of the top 12 home cooks in Canada. This season on MasterChef Canada. Three, come on! Go, go, go! Yeah. The country's best home cooks. Double fisting! Woo! Yeah. Will face the trickiest challenges ever. It's gonna be stressful. <sighs> it's also gonna be fun. Oh, They'll cook for picky eaters. Kids are here! Lunch is served! And refined palates. When I think of indigenous food, I think very approachable, and I had a lot of fun eating that. They'll cook for love. Ding, ding, ding. I think it's a wedding. <laughs> and they'll cook to impress a Canadian champion. An Olympic hero, Tessa Virtue. <laughs> they'll face bumps in the road. And bumps on the line. How long on that salmon and that lamb? Eight minutes? Yeah. That's killing me. They'll receive some big surprises. Oh, it's Becky. It's Becky. And serve incredible dishes. The plating is genius. It's like a symphony of flavors happening in my mouth right now. Wow. This is next level. Thanks, Chef. It's a quest. Yeah, baby. For the ultimate culinary prize. Are you ready? Yes, I didn't come here to lose. I came here to win. I'm the one to beat because I don't give up. And I'm a damn good cook.